putting in changing the, the wording was. Good evening. Welcome everyone to the May 10th, 2017 uh, Abington Finance Committee meeting. I think this may be our best attended meeting in my entire time on the board. Um, we have a lot to go over tonight. We have uh, the review of all of the special and annual town meeting warrant articles. Uh, we have a couple of groups of petitioners for annual town meeting warrant articles who have come to speak with us about their articles uh, before we make our recommendations on them. And I think we will kick it off right away with the CPA. Uh, if you guys want to come forward. Good evening, everybody. Um, uh, my name is uh, Paul Mollick. I'm the chair of the uh, CPA, and uh, um, we provide you with a handout. Um, um, one of the attachments is the uh, members of the, uh, of the Community Preservation Committee, and we have um, um, Jeff Rangel from Planning, uh, Rory from Park and Rec, Susan is, uh, is um, uh, one of the four people that. Uh, uh, picked by the selectmen, as as is uh, Jack Buckley, Dennis uh, Bergen from Historical, uh, John Zimini uh, is the uh, vice chair, and also one of the uh, four uh, members selected by the selectmen. Kathy Creighton uh, is from Conservation, she's not here. Melody Olson from Housing, um, and uh, Kelly Johnson is our, um, um, is our um, uh, administrative assistant. Um, so as far as like um, um, uh, a little bit of background of, of, um, of community preservation, uh, uh, Jack Buckley uh, uh, spearheaded um, um, uh, getting approval from town meeting uh, last year, which uh, went on the, um, um, uh, the ballot um, and got approved by, uh, by, by the town. Um, and um, uh, you know, how long do I have? Um, we got a busy night. So. Okay. <laughs> but I don't think we need the whole head. 10, 15, 10, 15 minutes? 15 minutes? Okay. All right. So basically, um, uh, you know, basically the, uh, um, uh, some of the money is used for historical preservation, open space, outdoor recreation, affordable housing. Um, and 1.5% um, uh, of, um, of uh, uh, tax revenue um, it goes to specifically to this. Um, the way the process works is um, uh, any uh, any organization within town that meets the eligibility requirements um, um, comes to the uh, community preservation um, uh, committee to present their uh, requests. Uh, and again, it has to meet specific uh, uh, guidelines. Uh, and if the uh, uh, community preservation approves it, um, uh, in a majority vote, it uh, then goes to uh, town meeting for approval. All right, um, none of the funds can be used for any um, um, any pr any purpose other than those specific. So um, you can't the town can't come to us and say, Geez, you know, we have a little bit of a shortfall in our budget th this year, and can you can we use that? You can't. All right. Um, so um, um, the article that we have going to uh, uh, to, to town meeting on um, um, May 22nd for projects that uh, uh, that we've approved um, um, deal with like um, uh, we've approved um, uh, you know we can we can approve uh, up to five percent for. Uh, our expenses, which is 18,000, uh, but f relative to special projects, um, um, DPW um, presented a request to uh, upgrade a lot of the equipment, uh, fencing, wood fiber for An uh, Arnold Park and Laidlaw Field, um, and the 
33,000 that's, uh, that's earmarked on the, um, uh, on the article is basically the cost of the equipment uh, and the material. Um, DPW will actually do the installation, uh, et cetera. So uh, that, was, uh, that was approved. Uh, Griffin Dairy um, Committee um, approved, uh, we've uh, came to us for requests for 75,490, which we approved, and that would be for uh, fencing, trails, a bridge, sign, and gravel as they start the process of uh, turning the uh, Griffin, uh, uh, Griffin Dairy into a useful um, 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 uh, project uh, for, the, for the residents of, uh, of Abington. Um, we've also approved 22,000 um, under historic res um, resources for American Legion uh, that repairs the, the outside of the structure. Um, the roof was leaking, windows, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and the 22,000 uh, meets the eligibility requirements under community preservation um, to, um, um, to, to, uh, to, to make sure the building doesn't collapse. Uh, we also approved uh, 35,000 for an engineering study for the Island Grove Bridge. Uh, the purpose of the study is to determine uh, you know, what's the extent of, uh, of uh, um, uh, you know, the bridge, uh, how much, um, uh, uh, so we can then get an estimate as to what the cost would be to fix it uh, and rebuild it. The 35,000 is just for the engineering study. Um, and um, and we, we voted to put 10% uh, 10, 10, 10 into the uh, Community housing. So, our budget for um, for this year is 219,957. We're going to carry over 140,000. Uh, and then the last page in the exhibit is the is um, what we expect to have for uh, anticipated revenue th um, uh, through um, fiscal year 2019. So we'll have 924,000. To be uh, uh, to have for projects coming up in the future, um, and uh, let's see, uh, and I think that's about it. So, um, anyways, questions? Yes. Um, what's included in the expenses for the CPA? What are uh, the admi um, administrative expenses would be to pay for our administrative assistant. Um, some stuff has to be uh, advertised. Um, Is that a part-time or full-time position? Part-time position. Um, and um, we also include um, um, things we have to advertise in the paper. Um, any uh, engineer, uh, any reports that we need to do, miscellaneous type stuff. So. Uh, um, <coughs> And under the guidelines, up to 5% uh, can be uh, earmarked specifically for that. <clears throat> and then, um, do you want to go next? Because I know I have a couple questions. Huh? Oh, I thought you did. So, did somebody else? Because I had a couple questions. Somebody else? Um, because I haven't kept up with a followed. What are they looking to do at Griffin's Dairy? Griffin's Dairy would be, uh, um, if, if you've gone down there, you know, they have like, uh, kind of like moats. Mm -hmm. uh, um, part of one would be, part of the expense would be to put a bridge over it. Um, and also some, some paths, some parking. And, and uh, uh, you know, I, we expect that they will be coming back uh, in the future for additional uh, improvements to be done uh, at Griffin's Dairy. That, you know what it'll be like used for? Fencing that they put out. Um, any like specific um, fields? Niche? There'll be uh, fields yeah, there'll be some fields. Yeah, right, right. Like yeah. walking paths or yeah. mm -hmm. yes. Uh, yeah, like, like they had the gardens and everything there. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. Um, and did you the what are some examples of like community housing that you that that's eligible? Um, it. Um, I think right now there's about a four-year wait for uh, housing for Abington residents. Um, so some of the money that um, that um, um, that we can allocate um, that has to be used for for housing uh, could be used to um, you know build new housing to maybe renovate some of the stuff that we have, et cetera. So I think we we are looking into that. And um, one of the towns uh, I don't know if it was Situate, they partnered with uh, I think Mass Housing Investment Trust. Um, and a, and a private contractor to uh, to build a part of the project that they did included uh, um, um, housing for uh, uh, for residents, et cetera. So, you know, that's a little bit of a um, 
uh, of, I think of all of the different um, uh, earmarks for community preservation, the housing piece would be something we'd have to really partner with somebody else to really yeah, it wouldn't necessarily get. be something that we wouldn't have enough money come to you and say we need because it, you wouldn't have the money to cover well we can we can do uh, yeah or? yeah yeah so we can we can uh, some of our money can be uh, used for, for we can set aside some of that for to do a bond or something mm -hmm. um, but really if you think of the cost of um, the expense of housing etc um, we don't have enough money uh, really to do that we probably have to partner can with it be used for updates for existing community housing uh, the exterior uh, the exterior of the building only the exterior, only the exterior right right so I mean we're, we'll, we'll start to look into that good question <coughs> uh, but it, it uh, that's that's something's gonna require a little bit of effort is the is the ten percent on that a minimum or a max that's the the, the, uh, the minimum okay that's that money is actually being put it put aside for future development yeah. Now, obviously, $36,000 you're not going to do a lot with, but you hope to build that part up so that at some time <coughs> the developer will come in and partner with, with the town and the state to build some housing yeah. for either senior or uh, veterans, something of that nature. John, why don't you give, take a couple seconds and give, um, give the Finance Committee a little bit of your background because John actually has some <coughs> I, um, preservation I experience. Actually, um, served in another community as a selectman, but I had some pretty extensive doing in doings with um, community preservation and some of the things that money can be used for and one of the things that is specific in the law is about um, affordable housing it can be used many different ways and one of the ways that we did it or we would use it for would be to for elderly housing or maybe some family housing but it would have to be moderate uh, income as well as uh, partner with somebody who a developer that might want to have a market rate and then have a certain amount a certain portion of that development be for affordable and therefore that would be eligible for some of our funding to help them I know we have quite a waiting mm -hmm. list for the two um, elderly housing yes places yep. in Abington a lot of communities are facing that I also worked for mass housing for five years I was in the, uh, um, the compliance wow. officer for mass housing so I'm pretty familiar with some of this stuff but in my former life, a lot of the money that's used for community preservation is, is for open space, which a good portion of this is going to that in our first allocation. You know, I think as a committee, and I'm speaking for myself, but also for the committee, I think we want to try to build that up so that we can do some big projects down the line. You know, mm -hmm. So that'll take a few years. Yeah, I think, I think you know, being a, um, going to town meeting for a number of years, I think, um, you know, the, the chances of something getting done that makes sense but would only get done if uh, if the town approved an override um, mm -hmm. had a very slim chance of uh, getting done if, if at all so I think this community preservation uh, um, um, committee process budget is a way for the town to get stuff done that otherwise wouldn't so you know like um, replacing the equipment um, at, the, at the like laid law and, and the other part there you know, if you walked, if you went down there, you'd, you you wouldn't argue that that the stuff is old and and, and actually is probably uh, um, is a safety hazard. Um, but the town didn't have any money to do that. Or Griffin Griffin's Dairy, we've the town's owned forever, uh, or it seems like it's owned forever, and it's and it, it's it's in the same state today that it was when we when the town first uh, first bought it. How many years ago that was, right? So this is a great way, I think, for the town or any town, but specifically Abington, to get stuff done that otherwise wouldn't get done. Uh, and I think um, we're, we're we're excited to hopefully uh, have, get town uh, town meeting approval, town, uh, so that people can actually see some of the stuff that uh, how the money's being spent, you know. So for and useful useful, uh, useful just projects. Just as, as a point of clarification, this is one article. For the warrant, it's the town will be voting all on all of these as one item, so it's really an all or nothing. Um, well, I guess if I, if hopefully they'll approve everything, um, but I guess in the event that they have, um, we can I guess we can split it up in the event that say I don't people don't want to do part of it. I I think it's probably not likely that they'll want to mm -hmm. split it up. I just wanted to make sure that that was clear to anybody watching or mm -hmm. something. So, any other questions? So the purpose of us coming is to is to kind of give you an, uh, an over, uh, oversight as to what we're looking to do. Um, Jack Buckley and, and uh, John went to the uh, Board of Selectmen uh, this past Monday uh, for the same purpose, and uh, and um, 
you know, we, um, uh, we would like your support. Uh, we don't need it in terms of like a, a vote to kind of move forward, but, uh, but I think uh, the more support we can get from Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen, it's, it's uh, greatly appreciated, so. Thank you. Good. Guys, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for time. Thank you to all the <coughs> committee members who came. All right. Next up, we have more petitioners. We have um, members of the LaPointe family coming to discuss the, I believe it's Article 12 of the annual town meeting. I can confirm that. Article 12, uh, granting a non-exclusive 60-foot wide access utility easement on the town senior center property. Yeah, yeah, if you don't mind. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, thanks for having us. Um, so I know when we were first discussing this, there were some, there were a lot of questions about where specifically on the property it was so if you're looking at the um, the senior center driveway and you're on Summer Street, is it to the right towards the tracks or to the left? Right next to the tracks. Yes. Right next to the yep. Yep. So it would run straight up right next to the tracks the whole way. Yeah. And then I think there were other questions about if granting the uh, easement would block any other um, property that abuts, not obviously on the side of the easement, but other like back property or if there would be any. So we're, we're the owners of the back property. Okay. Um, and that's actually what we're trying to get access to. Okay. Um, our thought is to basically be able to tie the senior center in with the property that we own out back, which we're trying to get approved uh, for senior housing, figuring that um, I think we have what, 16 acres, eight to 10 of them are buildable out there. So um, we're working with a gentleman from the state trying to figure out, you know, how many units um, we can get in there. And basically, judging by what you guys had talked about before, we've heard different things in town for the waiting list of, um, of the senior housing. We've heard anywhere from three years to the latest I've heard was almost seven years. Yeah, I called the other day, and the lady said five to seven years. Yeah, and she I've said hundreds five of Five years uh, yeah. is what I've heard. Yeah, Christine. hundreds of applicants uh, waiting, basically. On the waiting list, yeah. yeah. Right, and she said that, and that and that's, doesn't even include people that call up and hear that it's that long and say forget it, yeah. you know. So our it's our opinion that it's going to be a long time before the town uh, gets senior housing unless somebody comes in and does it privately. Um, we're hoping to, to, to do that and kind of solve that the senior housing problem in Abington. Um, the land that we have is actually, in our opinion, the perfect spot for it because we'll be able to kind of utilize the existing senior center um, and, and basically tie our project into it. You know, but we're asking for the driveway easement for uh, utilities, which are basically already up at this halfway up right in, by the senior center. the senior center. Exactly. So it would just be an extension of those um, and also um, to extend the uh, driveway to the edge of our property. Um, we do have another access, which is off of Plymouth Street, um, but that would kind of segregate, if we, if we didn't use that, that would somewhat segregate the senior center. Uh, it would be coming in basically solely off of that, and we have to meet with the fire department as well, so the fire department may um, ask for more than one way in and out. You know, one of them may be a main entrance, and, and the other one may be just for uh, emergency vehicles. You know, but that has to be determined by them. I guess what we're asking for the town is to basically grant us the right to explore the options by using that easement. And at that point, we have to secure funding still. Um, and this easement would only be used for uh, elderly housing, senior housing, if, if uh, we couldn't put something else out there. It's strictly for, for senior housing. Yeah, if we decide we want to change our mind, basically the easement goes away. You know what I mean? Yep. Sean? <coughs> this is more of a question to you for town management for a moment. I, I don't see the big deal of it, quite honestly. And I, I just don't understand. I mean, it's great to have you guys here. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, I see yourself from my wave. Uh, but for, for, for all intents and purposes, the only things that pop into my head is in the wintertime, do we have to plow it? 
Um, do we have to keep it up? And is there any liability associated with it? And I think the answer to those, all those questions are going to be no and yes, right? It's just something that we're going to have part of the senior center. It looks great. It seems natural to me. It just seems natural. I wasn't certain if I was missing something as it relates to is there an expressed question of hidden cost or something? Because when I read it, I'm like, makes sense. Yeah, I, I, I had a similar feeling to you. I think there were some questions in our previous meetings that we wanted to address. If I could, I, just so you know, this, uh, we do have the board of, uh, did have some questions that we have posed to council uh, regarding the easement. The selectmen did hear from these gentlemen the other evening, um, and uh, some of those questions obviously have to do with. Um, and, and by the way, they have not. Uh, they're generally supportive of this, um, but it's the selectmen's uh, opinion at the moment. Uh, to be corroborated by council that if town meeting votes this, town meeting can't force the selectmen to uh, enter into an easement agreement. Um, uh, they can uh, authorize the selectmen to negotiate an easement agreement. And some of the conditions that would apply are the types of things that uh, we have asked council for opinion on. So, uh, but they generally, and some of those, as Sean points out, are, um, have to do with uh, you know, things like is there, would there also be a utility easement? In who, uh, you know, um, who would be dealing with the care and maintenance of, of the easement? Would it be uh, uh, the utility easement? Would it be something that, that would have to be, uh, uh, would it be an addition to the easement with the town? Um, would it be a maintenance agreement with um, Abington? Um, I'm sorry, what's the name of the uh, LLC? Investments. Um, Abington Investments. other types of questions um, so but like I said generally supportive um, and what happens if you know if something doesn't uh, uh, work out successfully from an investment standpoint or financially with everything else see what happens to the easement is it, uh, um, you know, is it uh, does the easement also uh, become null and void so those types of questions obviously I'm sure the general have also thought of those too so um, so this legal questions to be answered and hopefully as many before town meeting as possible um, if not all of them before town meeting so so those are still pending so, so matt <clears throat> so to rick i'm gonna look at him mm -hmm. it's gonna be through you just for technicality piece it, it's the sole authority of the board of selectmen to enter into the easement correct if so, so authorized by town meeting if so, authorized, right. So, okay. Um, because the, I guess this is maybe a Tom moderator question then as it relates to the the wording of the article. All right, because it says to, to see if the town will vote to grant a non-exclusive and a town meeting can't grant it, it's actually to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into. So the form of the motion is, is also a question that we have posed to council. What the motion uh, what the, needs to say. And I guess this is a uh, this is going to be a uh, moderator question. You know, can 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 it be amended? Because you're, you're narrowing the scope, which I believe is appropriate. Mm -hmm. You can narrow the scope, you can expand the scope, and that's a Sean Riley question, yep. which would keep this in order, yes. right? And then that's just I would hate to see bureaucratic mess get in the way. Mm -hmm. Cindy. So if this is for senior housing, are these units going to be like? The sale for like private people buying them, or is it going to be like for the housing authority that we already have, and then who oversees all of that if that's the case? They're going to be rentals basically, um, but though some of the but portion of them will be affordable, and we're going to have to hire uh, a private management company. Um, basically, it has to be state certified certified by the state to run the units. So basically it'll be pretty much the state will be dictating which units are affordable and, and which are. And maintenance and all of that stuff is it's all going to be private, yep. Yeah. So it won't be any any added cost to the top. Right, so if anything, I mean, in my opinion, this is, there'll be 144 units that is actually taxable to the town. So not only, so not only I mean, if the town built it publicly, um, it really. The whole Off building, right. but it's yeah. going to be a he hefty yeah. tax yeah. bill. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Right. So it should work out in the town's favor. We're hoping, as far as being able to get some tax revenue out of the project as well. We've also discussed with the seniors about um, possibly doing some upgrades to the um, to the senior center. If this the existing senior center, correct? Yeah, doing some added parking and possibly moving the 
main entrance from the side to the front of the building. You know, it's on the mm -hmm. side. Yeah, now. it's like kind of. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, basically, we've already talked touch base with them, and they're all for it. Basically, you know. Yeah, we're hoping it's a win-win situation for the town. I mean, it, it'll be a good project. It, it'll fit right in with the senior center. Um, and like I said, this is just basically to give us the rights to the um, to the um, for the driveway, basically. The, right. The access. Right. Access. Exactly. Exactly. So, and then we have to take further steps from there. Yep. You know, secure money and everything else. So, I, I think we got to go to planning board, right? Yeah. So, I mean, we're planning, one of the two. we're going to end up hopefully working hand in hand with as many of the boards as we can you know to make it a project that I think everybody is happy with and the, you know the the town's happy with so um, Barbara. if everything goes well what would you see as being like a time frame if if every I think he gave us a timetable of uh, six months to go through the uh, procedure with the state I would expect that to possibly be a little bit longer than that mm -hmm. um, yeah. and that would it, <laughs> exactly so but that's that's what we've heard um, and that would be basically to let us know on funding, uh, what funding was available, what we're eligible for, and stuff like that. So, I mean, there's still a lot of work to go for us, right. even if this easement gets granted. There's still a lot of work for us to, to secure enough money to build a project like this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to build a project, you're looking at at least two years, wouldn't you say? Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. But I, I don't see, I, I mean, maybe I'm missing something, but I don't know. I mean, the town's in need of it, and I don't know if there's, I mean, I don't know if they're going to ask the taxpayers to, you know, one way or another, we need the senior housing. I don't know where it's going to come from, other than you well, know. the CPA is going to take how many years to pile up enough money to do a project? Yeah. At, yeah. At a right. I mean, what do they get? Thirty five thousand. Yeah. Right. So, and I think that's kind of what they were actually just talking about was basically being able to give some of that money to maybe a project like this if they wanted to do something, you know, a common room or, or whatever, you know, if they wanted to add something to it. I think that would be eligible for that. So, Rick. Yeah, a couple of things. How many of the 144 units would be affordable? I'm not sure what the percentage is. Yeah. I'm not sure either of the exact percentage. I think it's a percentage that basically is figured by the state. Which the, the rents are basically going to be exactly the way they are right now for the for the seniors at the high school and Blanchard Terrace over there. We're keeping them all the same. They're going to be in line. In the line. Same, the same rate. So it's it's nothing that we're going to make a ton of money with. It's basically for the seniors. So. They're going to dictate what the what the rents will be, and so they'll, be, they'll be similar to what they are now. Is the whole project 55 plus or something? Like 62. 62. 62. Yeah, yeah. And believe me, this guy get, this guy gets offended by that when I uh, tell him every time. But it's 62. This guy could be in there in a couple of years. So. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> it should be a good it should be a good project. Good project for the town is. <clears throat> Town manager said, there's, "There's things we have to iron out. We're not ex we're not asking for something for nothing. This easement, we we will pay for it, or we'll do work at the senior centers, which we which we already told them that we will do, and um, we can just work out those details. Uh, that's fine. But we're not asking the town for something for nothing. So just to make that clear. Anyone else, gentlemen?" Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. That is all we have for petitioners. So it's time to get down to nitty gritties. Let's start where we will start 
on the 22nd with the special town meeting warrant. That one we should be able to get through fairly quickly. This is just more a curiosity question. Um, how are we doing on the meals tax revenue? We're, we got 275000 last year. We're hoping we're going to hit that again. 275000 That was actually in the I, I know it was. packet I just, that we got sent, so I have it printed out right here. Two hundred and ninety-six thousand one hundred and eighteen. If I'm looking at the right line, which I'm not a hundred percent sure, because part of the document was cut off when I printed. I believe that that's where we were. That's all. I just was curious how that was going. All right. So, to the warrant articles for the special town meeting. Article 1, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate uh, transfer funds. Uh, these are the outstanding bills that we have. Um, I think we've covered these. Did anyone have any remaining questions on these uh, before we vote? Move the article. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor of recommending uh, Article 1, please raise your hand. Opposed? It is unanimous. Article 2 is transferring the sum of $200,000 from certified free cash to the stabilization fund. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion on this one? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining? It is unanimous. Article 3 is to transfer $40,000 from certified free cash to the other post employment benefit fund, also known as OPEB. Motion. Second. A motion and a second. Do we have any discussion on this one? All those in favor? Opposed? I believe it was unanimous. Deb says yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Article 4 is to pay off the snow and ice balances from fiscal year 2017 and before I say it incorrectly again, the final payment on 2015. For real this time, the final payment on 2015. I think I have said that wrong in the past. The, uh, so that is article number four. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Do we have any discussion on that one? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining, it is unanimous. And article five is the transfers to balance the budget, and balance the books more than balance the budget. The budget was balanced. Um, we have our final amounts on there on the latest version that you all should have. We had a few TBDs the last time around mm -hmm. for total amounts. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Mm -hmm. I think we've discussed this one fairly well in previous meetings. No discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining, it is unanimous again. <coughs> 
you may. Yes. The reason why that even after it had been previously approved for the on bill um, payment schedule, um, apparently the, going back uh, a year or two prior to the um, approval, the library, some of the library bills payments had been uh, misapplied as fire department bills, uh, having similar uh, by National Grid, which affected I appreciate you finding yes. the answer to that. Yep. Uh, um, but just so you know, quick numbers that uh, in total for three projects, um, the investment uh, was approximately 112000 The credits was approximately uh, from the rebates from the National Grid was approximately 30000 with an estimated annual savings of about $26,000 as a benefit from the retro So, for what it's worth. Say those again. The investment was 112. So over a few years, the yes. entire well, investment will be made back. Um, question regarding the library and the credit rating. You said that um, there was some thing yeah. with things being billed to the fire department. Yeah, and this goes back a couple of years, but apparently their, some of their billing, uh, their payment of their bills were misapplied by National Grid to uh, the fire department. Um, is <laughs> just like I'm not sure why we get bond ratings because public facilities aren't going to go bankrupt. Or the island of Puerto Rico. That was the that was the explanation. Um would that be something that can be remedied? Are we Okay. All right. Anyone have other questions there? All right. Shall we move forward to the annual town meeting warrant? We start with the budget right away, since that is, in fact, Article 1. just so that it is information that is um, out there for everyone. And as I was looking through uh, notes and things over the, the week or so, one of the things that stood out to me was the uh, animal control uh, salaries and expense lines. I don't know if anybody else noted that. Um, I had asked the town manager about it who 
uh, explained. Would you care to explain for? Yes. All. They're really on top of it, though, just to say, I, I, uh, the animal control, um, see all the time with people, they, they are uh, pretty active on answering people on some of the different town pages and, and things and seem to be pretty uh, proactive or, or you seem to get to things pretty quickly. One of the other questions that I had, and I couldn't find this in my notes, and I apologize because I think we probably talked about it, was the increase for North River. North River Park, right? Yes. It's a small $4,000 increase overall, but. Most of the rest of the questions that I have had at any point have been answered throughout our previous meetings. Uh, liability goes up because of the new school. Uh, some of the things like street lights have moved around from one area to another uh, within lines of the budget, so they look weird. Is that but the highway expense? Yes, yeah. Lighting moved from its own line last last year in the budget to highway expense. So the the lighting line is zero now, and the highway expense is a hundred thousand dollars higher. Yep. Didn't we actually used to do it that way? Door. It, didn't lights used to be in the highway department budget? It was in the highway with a subtitle street lights. Yeah. Yeah. Used to be street lights. Yeah. And so now that's how we do, we go back to doing it that way now that we're yeah. DPW. Yes. What other budget discussion points and questions do we have? Refresh my memory on the recreation expense. Uh, which one? I think page three. Uh, uh, that was one that I actually was not 100% sure on. Um, I think that I had seen that in my notes.
with the consolidation of staff that yep. would be done with the can increase the expenses a little bit and help uh, a little bit of the burden of some of the revolving fund fee structure and then increase their expenses a little bit and try to absorb a little bit of the cost themselves. Is that uh, yes. That's I actually just right before you started found that and found that in my notes where it says where they lowered their salaries to put the money into groundkeeping supplies uh, so that they would be able to cut fees for youth sports from twenty five thousand twenty not thousand twenty five dollars to five dollars uh, and that the turf fields will have fees that will go towards future replacement of the turf in the ten to fifteen year range when those fields become overly used and old, so excellent memory. So in essence, that one was shifting money from one spot to another, but allowing them to lower user fees in the process. And make liability it. insurance. Liability is uh, primarily the new school. The, the value of the new school is significantly more Motion to approve Article 1 and the corresponding attachment A detailing the town budget for FY18. Second. Well, wait, show what? <laughs> Motion to approve Article 1. Much, <laughs> and the attachment that's included here that's referred to as attachment A for fiscal year 18. I think each of them were able to give you that. <laughs> it's just one of those long winded. Really? We got a second, too. Yes, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those, I Barbara. All those in favor of approving Article One, the budget for the FY18 for the town. Opposed. Abstaining. It is unanimous. Thank you very much. And before we continue to the next one, a big thank you to the town manager, the assistant town manager, and the entire town financial team on the work that they've done on the budget to get it to a point where uh, we were very readily able to approve it unanimously. Moving on, Article 2 is the article to increase the town clerk's salary line item. This is one that has to go to town meeting every year. Uh, Leanne has to sit in front of the town and ask for a raise. Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving? Opposed? Abstaining? It is unanimous. Article three is the capital plan. Uh, from the last time that we talked, there is a change to the capital plan, or two changes to the capital plan. Uh, the much discussed uh, HVAC system for the cabin in the grove is no longer on the capital plan. Uh, and as pointed out by our water commissioner, the VAC truck is also no longer on the plan. 
Uh, everything else remains the same with the same amounts and these same funding sources. I think the most difficult part of all this was actually getting the tables to line up. Well. <laughs> 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 yeah. The original copy that I printed, I printed from a different word processor and it did not look good. I printed about 17 pages just to get the table. I think so. you should have put the article on its own page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Motion to approve Article 3. Oh. Can I just make, ask something quickly? I think yeah. it's, well, it's more like a, just my thought. Do just a quick, quick question to Deb, it's parliamentary. No, sorry, Cindy, just a parliamentary oh, question okay. to Deb. Should we do the motion and then discuss? Yeah, okay. okay. It's Ask just away. a quick, because I know it's going to go through, but I'm just building off that it, by voting that 225 in textbooks, is there a way that it can be, can't vote it in, but just not set a precedent that this is going to be a, a plug for a budget every year? I. Speaking personally, um, I think that all of us on this committee are under that understanding and okay. can definitely push so. that in the year yeah. in the year to come and in the multiple years to come. Okay. But I don't want to put words in the town manager's mouth, but I believe that that is his understanding as well. That this was okay. a one-time deal. And and just one of the one of the points that I've I've tried to keep in mind when looking at it was that they they did say when they were talking about this that this is new curriculum material and is not an every year expense. The it's books books are in anyway, but books are an every year expense, mm -hmm. but this particular purchase is not necessarily an every year expense. Kind of I, I know. Barbara has related it to the cruisers. In yeah, previous again, I get that. It, which is always a, a discussion. Are, there's certain, so. the, certain capital items that I can go back and forth on whether they're capital items or not. I, I can listen to both arguments and uh, agree with both. Yeah. So it, it's how you're looking at it and yeah. perspective at the time, I suppose. Uh, and I was when I was looking through them, the lawnmower was another one that struck me as at least somewhat similar because the Parks and Grounds Department always needs to mow the lawns, and they will always have a need for lawn mowers, but they won't necessarily buy one every year, if that makes sense. So, it's definitely, it's definitely the, it's definitely the hot button item of this plan. So, so, any other discussion? Of the article. Second. Have a motion. Oh, I can't. I, oh, we did it. Oh, wait. We did. Yeah. It's, it's we on the motion. No, no, we didn't. Yeah. We We're, didn't officially we did. accept the the motion. Oh, and you. thank you. And I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the capital plan that we have discussed in length in previous meetings? And all those in favor of approving the capital plan. Opposed? The ayes have it. <coughs> Article 4, uh, the revol revolving funds. Uh, question to town manager. J and K, I believe, are the only ones with changes. Are those the only ones we need to identify? I know there was talk of a bylaw change about that. Yeah, this, this article is actually in the form of a bylaw this year. Okay. Um, so in the future, the only thing that would have to be approved by the town would be the Jay was the Council on Age, and that was the Council on Aging, and it was to, to 
allow more events to be held this will, this in theory. Questions, comments, motions? Yeah, oh, Sean. <coughs> to Rick, for you. Uh, Rick, so help, help, me understand, help me understand the unemployment costs associated with if the funds exist, you're going to pay someone to do a job, but if the funds don't exist, we're not going to pay you to do a job. It's just sub subcontractors, so to speak, they're just being contracted to do the work? Basically, yes, we would hire, you know, a part part time hiring or perhaps the, the current wiring inspection license would, would be hired to do more hours if necessary, or we hire an additional uh, separate wiring inspector if there's more work uh, driven by additional uh, wiring permits. Uh, we would hire perhaps a, a part time uh, building inspector that we don't have on staff right now if, uh, if subdivision plans uh, increase. But when the fees are gone, that person no longer has work, and they're consequently laid off. Well, the, well, the person is, is they're not, well, that's true, but the person has is, is, is never been a permanent employee. The person has only been a part-time. Oh, sure. It's just that there's a whole, the, 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 the DUA question yeah, comes. The person's only been a temporary, temporary employee. Sure. In Maybe I misunderstand it, but it's pretty, sense, like pretty positive per, per that you have somebody who works a minimum number of hours is eligible for unemployment. unemployment. Or if you reduce their hours. Not, not a big deal. Is I want to make sure I understand it. I, yeah. I, I fully appreciate the concept, but I believe that there's going to be an, an additional yeah, expense guess, associated with this. That's an interesting point. Um, well taken. I would probably have to do a little more research on that, but I guess I, I was never anticipating that we would, somebody would actually be working enough hours to qualify. That's, I guess that's um, Mr. Rapp's way. Other questions, comments? Hope to recommend. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining? 
the eyes have it. Uh, Article 5 is to raise and appropriate available funds, $14,000 for student transportation to students attending out of school vo vocational schools. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining? It is unanimous. Article 6 is the Community Preservation Committee uh, proposal, which we just had the Community Preservation Com uh, Committee in to discuss with us. Uh, do we have any points of discussion for this one? Second. And a second. Any further discussion? Without that, all those in favor of approving, raise your hand. Opposed? It is unanimous. Article 7 is to declare surplus properties. Uh, and this is so that the properties that were determined by a committee to, who reviewed the town property holdings. Um, it is to allow the Board of Selectmen, if they so choose for any of these properties, to sell them. So moved. A motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion? Without that. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? It is unanimous. Article 8 is to raise the, what's the new wording, the total dollar limit, uh, no, sorry, the tax rebate. tax rebate program amount, the property tax credit from 500 to 600. Um, this is for senior citizen property tax work off abatement program. Uh, the amount that the senior citizens can be credited in this has now become taxable. Uh, so we are raising the amount so that it will cover the taxes. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining, it is unanimous. Article 9 is to see if the Board of Selectmen will acquire, uh, purchase, gift, or eminent domain um, for purposes of conveyance the parcel of land on Chestnut Street that I believe is basically surrounded by Ames Knoll State Park and <coughs> <laughs> Noel, N O W E L L. Um, and is uh, going to become, the intent is for this to be taken by the town, given to the state. Yeah, the, the state would like to purchase this. Yes, uh, sold to the state to become part of the state park. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? It is unanimous. Article 10 is to vote to create a health insurance trust fund. And this is as we are, we have left the Mayflower uh, Health Group. This is for us to create a fund to pay the vendors for our health insurance for our employee, town employees, essentially. Motion to approve for discussion purposes. Second. Motion and a second discuss away. Um, I had wanted to ask Sean. Sean had, um, can you remind me what you what you had brought up about this? Um, I'm reading my notes here. 
Well, the question would be, is that of self-insurance? So I had asked very specifically who the reinsuring carrier is going to be, what the anticipated costs are going to be compared to having um, what would be otherwise known as conventional or commercial insurance, paper fronted by Blue Cross Blue Shield, no exposure to the town as a whole, compared to the town owning the fully funded first dollar loss. We had a grand discussion of don't really know, but they want to do it because Mayflower is dissolving and we think we can do better. That's my recollection. I don't have as great recall as Matt, but it's <laughs> 12 years of hearing this stuff, so. I know that we also had discussions related to health care with the water department when they were in and comparing what the water department employees health plan was to our health plan. I don't know if that might be also in your mind as no, far as... No, it was this. I'm, I, yeah. I mean, we have, with the town is voted to Basically, in essence, this article is a banking article. Let's take from the employees from the town, put it into one one fund, pay out of that fund. With the look to in the future um, join other towns in a consortium. I think that is. Because the town doesn't necessarily want to be in the business of health well, not, insurance. Not, not, not uh, long term um, on our own, uh, we're smaller than we'd like to be. Right? So something uh, much more modest than the Mayflower Health Group, yes, um, but larger than, than uh, probably something of you know, two, two and a half times larger than. Um, my <clears throat> any con I can provide to you is going to be exclusively my opinion. I'm just in, in, well, in, that's in, in managing I'm just a group of similar I... size, um, 734 uh, employees, 2,000 plus lives. I would never in my life do self-insurance. I have a different risk threshold than the town does. It's remarkably much more diverse. I'm hyper confident that the financial discretion of the community with regards to which direction it wants to go in has been remarkably vetted. I don't have to agree with it. Um, I'm a little more risk averse when it comes to behaviors that I can't control. Uh, by personal experience, I self-insure workers' comp and do very well because for the most part you can employ folks to be much more safe in the job, but you can't change their personal behaviors. So you absorb risks associated with things that are well outside of your control. Those are the cons that everybody who has a con will say those cons. The pros are every year that you have a healthy year, you absorb that cash instead of giving it away. So you can have a remarkably healthy year and the actuaries will tell you that your group can be predicted to behave a certain way. And I'm certain they have all that data and suggest that if based on the previous year's performance, given the age of the folks that we have and their current health conditions for which the insurers have access to that data. They say you should spend this amount of money. Plus, you'll get back pharmacy rebates that are currently going to your 
commercial health insurance, so instead of having to deal with that, you guys will get them straight back. So those are all the, that's both sides of the equation. My personal opinion, I wouldn't do it. But again, I don't have the experience of the community. Thank you. Sean yeah. is, uh, is obviously knows exactly what he's talking about. The concern, well, the issue here really is that the decision has been made. Yes. So the, so the point is that having a trust fund um, is uh, obviously uh, is not really a huge debate for July 1. The question is uh, um, how do you consider the I think the, the question would be what were the alternatives to setting up a trust fund and if this article were not to pass, what, what exactly would we do? How would we, how, how would we organize the payments because the... the but to, I guess it's just as a, just to keep the discussion at the table for a second. I don't know why you wouldn't pass it. The decision I, has already been made. I agree. There needs to be a vehicle to keep those funds sequestered from the general fund, yep. identify what your spend is, and identify the success or loss of the program instead of having it individually charged back. And some, I don't know, Sue can talk about her accounting nightmares with regards to not doing that. Mm -hmm. The decision's made, and it just seems as though, are we gonna say yes, we're gonna give a bucket to put it in or no? And I, if we say no, then it creates more hardship because the ultimate decision, I think, is already, as, as the town manager had indicated, that part's already been made. That part was made, I believe, last year. So. And the employees' monies that come in, in, in ahead of time, that going into that trust fund, their insurance, their, their interest is staying with that trust fund. It's not going to the general fund, so it's their money. And so that money is going to be available to them for, you know, later health insurance claims or whatever they need. That's the reason you have to set up the trust fund, and yep. especially just for their side of it. I just was more like I said. I yeah. wanted to know what the well, both sides of it were. Yeah. I, uh, that piece that piece. yeah. Now, I, you question the chaos. Uh, I mean, the, the issue as to whether or not you know uh, Abington's options in terms of staying in a, a chaotic ship that's losing its best risk, um, the, the Mayflower, or making the decision we made when we made it. That's you know that's obviously. Move to recommend approval. Second. Oh, we already had a motion. I believe we already had the motion. Oh, right. I, 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 it was for discussion purposes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just taking this okay. So you no, Move you take it. I'll take the second. Barbara with the second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining. It is unanimous. Article eleven. Uh, Town will raise and appropriate five thousand dollars for health imperatives, violence intervention, and prevention, which is formerly a new day. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining. It is unanimous. Article twelve. Uh, this is another one we already discussed tonight. The uh, non-exclusive 60-foot wide access utility easement. Uh, we understand from earlier discussion that there may be legal wording or otherwise content related changes that uh, I'm sure I will be put on the spot to add at the podium at town meeting. Yeah, I generally support of themselves, I think subject to an appropriate motion from drafted by town council, they'll be supported. Um, and uh, as I mentioned here before the meeting, Mr. Chairman, um, whatever it is you ultimately recommend as a slate here, I will draft some motions for you at your review and for town council's review. And um, obviously, whatever the town council drafts Yes, subject to the questions. Uh, so I can oppose. I'll share that with you. Much appreciated. Mr. Chairman? 
Yes. I strongly encourage us not to take any action tonight and do so at the I meeting was, before the... I was going to suggest that we table this until the meeting before town meeting. Article 13. Uh, do we need to, Deb, do we need to vote on not voting? Okay, just making sure. Uh, Article 13. Um, this is property on the border of Abington and Rockland, uh, paying a utility, uh, there's a permanent utility easement. Remind me what the, this is a weird, weird property. Yeah, utility that even happen? Just like from when the towns mer uh, split up or? Just out of curiosity, where exactly is that located? Okay. Yep. Um, is this piece of property by any chance on the surplus list? <laughs> Didn't expect it would be, but <laughs> figured figured I'd check. Motion to approve Article Thirteen. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Without any, all those in favor of approval? Opposed? Abstaining? That is unanimous. Article 14. Uh, and this is the uh, stretch code. And I believe that the town manager um, is going to have a little bit more detail after the selectmen meeting. Does not make us compliant. Some 
Questions? Sean. Very simple. There's no reason to think that this is penny wise, pound foolish. There's not something hidden in there that says, geez, we're going to stymie development and growth. I've heard nothing of the sorts. Agreed. So I think it sounds perfectly reasonable, but that's just keeping it simple and it's either yes or no, penny wise, pound foolish. And if it's no, then you have a, a motion from me. Is that a motion? No. I said, is it no? So the question is, is there any gotchas in the language? Oh. Yes or no? That's no. all. Really, that's beautiful. Motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? And that was going to be my question as well, the penny wise, pound foolish. Were there any gotchas? Were there any uh, the things that would... The that would pays for, uh, the Green Communities Act is already, you're already paying for in your electric bills statewide. So people who are in the Commonwealth are getting all of our money. So it's another CPA, in essence. Any further discussion? With a motion and a second, all those in favor of approval? All those opposed? Abstaining? It is unanimous. Article 15. The town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1 million to replace water mains. Uh, for those who uh, either were not here or do not remember last week, this is money. This is money that was already budgeted by the water department last year, but uh, there was a mix-up with the with the details of a $2 million versus a $3 million. Um, and it is something that does not impact the uh, water rates. Motion to, right. oh, okay. <laughs> Motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining? <coughs> it is unanimous. Article 16. Uh, this is to authorizing the town the uh, borrowing money what was this this is the one where and I'm looking at Sue Oakland yes. <laughs> uh, this was the one where um, yeah, this, this is it's
not really. <laughs> So rather than that two million dollar premium going to the general fund, you have to take a vote to, to move that money into the, the uh, capital account. This will allow you not to have to all the previous borrowers, but you don't set the cost. It reduces the cost of that project, right? Yes. In essence, it allows us to to pay off our loans right. faster yes. without, having to, to town without having to go to town meeting. Will it also apply to future no. bonds? Okay. So just what's currently on the books. Motion to approve Article 16. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Those opposed? Abstaining? It is unanimous. Excellent. <laughs> Article 17. And this is to I'll basically give the tax collector some teeth to distribute the list of uh, people who are not paying their taxes or fees to departments more than just once a year. They have to be a year behind. Now this won't allow you to do it ahead of time. So you can do it, if they're behind three months, you can say, oh, they're behind three months and we're not, you know, they can't get permits. So at the point of license renewal, so you're able to say, until your taxes are up to date, you will not renew your license. Yep. In effect, this, this new would commemorate the bylaw uh, the way things actually work. Um, yep. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Sure. It's a technical question. So, so any local taxes, fees, assessments, does that include if somebody has a, uh, a lack of a dog license? They get a, a ticket from somebody, or if they have a um, marijuana piece, they get a ticket for somebody. Does that include failure to pay that ticket as well? Is that considered part of the assessment? Or this is strictly just taxes. 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 So any taxes, fees. fees, assessments, betterments, or municipal charges. On your property, though, only on, only to do with your property, not your persons. Would it? I, But I don't believe a dog voice. Right now, so, so the, the lament previously from um, uh, from Peter Pajensky is that it's darn near impossible to get someone to pay, use the at the time it was the uh, legalization of marijuana. It was you can issue the fine, but it's hard to enforce the payment thereof. Does this, does this? Actually, you're, you're, you're right, reading it, the tax collector or other municipal officials. So it would be any, any late fees or fines. But then, I mean, Library books. Right, that part's not changing. No. Yeah, the only, only part that is changing is, is the periodically as yes, opposed right. to just right. annually. Yeah, which so is true, but I never look at that part of the code, so I figured it out. Yep. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? That All those in favor of approval? Opposed? Abstaining. It is unanimous. Article 18. Uh, and this one is the zoning bylaw changes as it relates to historical New England character. And it is adding several paragraphs, some of which are identical, to several sections of the zoning bylaws. Um, and in my time on the board, at least, this is something that we will typically defer to the planning board who made the petition. Uh, this does not, in 
my mind appear to be something that will uh, cause significant financial harm to the town if it is enacted. Is this the one that changes? So this is just like speaking to the definition, the that. first part of it, though? Yes. Questions on Article 18? Do have a motion from anyone? Motion to defer. Second. To, to, the, to planning the planning board. board. Motion and a second. Second. No, Mike seconded. Oh, I didn't hear. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Barbara's trying to steal the second. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all those in favor of deferring to the planning board? Opposed, abstaining, it is unanimous. Article 19, another zoning bylaw, and this one is to create a new <coughs> temporary moratoria, not the one that we previously had uh, when medicinal marijuana was enacted, but this one is for recreational marijuana uh, as the, this was a board that I had not heard of before. The Cannabis Advisory Board is apparently going to be providing uh, municipalities with instruction and advice on how to appropriately uh, code for recreational marijuana usage facilities. So, again, this is one where I think uh, deferring to the planning board, I think it's the planning board again, planning board. So moved. That's Second. Wise. Any other discussion? A motion and a second. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining? Have one abstention. Article 20, uh, another zoning bylaw change. This one um, is to the definition of what is an apartment. And is, Wait, is that 20 or 21? It is 20. It won't be uh, yeah. updated. Almost updated. Those aren't the articles. <laughs> Those are the handouts. So, um, so this one is from the zoning enforcement officer. And it is to change the <coughs> definition to of an apartment to be one or more rooms forming a habitable unit containing complete and independent living facilities. Any discussion? Motions? Does it change like the tax rate? I, mean, I, I would assume that this does not change anything to do with the property tax rates. No. Um, are there properties that are not currently <coughs> deemed apartments that this would turn into apartments or vice versa, properties that are currently considered apartments that would not be? Like is an in-law no longer considered an apartment? And it was before, I don't think it was. Uh, certain spaces. 
this seems to me like another one where we would defer. Zoning board. Zoning board. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Any reasons not to defer? Without any? All those in favor of deferring? Opposed? Abstaining? It is unanimous. Uh, another zoning board article, Article 21, uh, to amend the bylaws, specifically um, this one was for tattoo parlor or body piercing by making the following changes, deleting the current N in zoning district HC and inserting in place thereof SP. It's very zoning boardish language. Defer to zoning board. Second. A motion and a second. Uh, any discussion on that? Without that, all those in favor of deferring to the zoning board? Opposed? Abstaining? Shaw? And the final article uh, is the article to raise and appropriate uh, transfer available funds to settle collective bargaining agreements or take any other action. Uh, unless the town manager has any announcement to make on a collective bargaining agreement, uh, this is one that we will put off voting on until before town meeting. Uh, is there any discussion on this one that anyone has? All right, so we will wait on that one as well. So we have two that we have not voted on that we will int we intend to vote on before town meeting. And that completes the annual town meeting warrant. And it is not even 9 o'clock. completes our new business on the agenda for tonight. And that brings us to our uh, recurring business. Are there any liaison reports? Uh, Pete Walters is not here. Uh, usually gives updates from the school building committee. Um, Liggy and myself and Deb attended last night the school building committee school committee finance committee tour of the new high school building and, uh, it is very impressive i think would be probably the best way to describe it uh, it is a beautiful building that continues to come in uh, on time and under budget so I think it's definitely something that will continue to make our town proud for years. So. Chair can give you a uh, virtual tour if you'd like. Yes, I have pictures that anyone can see. Uh, when I loaded them onto my computer, it told me that I took about 120 pictures while we were on the tour. So it was definitely camera happy. <laughs> uh, but it was definitely worth it. So, uh, Any other liaison reports? All right, there were no correspondence this week, uh, so we have nothing there. Uh, we do have minutes to approve from last week, May 3rd. Motion to approve the meeting minutes of May 3rd, 2017. Second. Have a motion and a second. Uh, Lisa cannot vote on these. She was excused from last week's meeting. Uh, is there any discussion on the meeting minutes that were uh, expertly prepared by our recording secretary? Without any discussion, those in favor of approving the minutes? Opposed? Abstaining? They are approved. Um, our next meeting was scheduled for tomorrow night in the event that we were not able to get through everything tonight. We need a motion to cancel the meeting tomorrow. And we are just canceling the meeting tomorrow. So we do not have a meeting tomorrow night. Our next meeting will be on 
Monday, May 22nd at 6 o'clock before town meeting. Any further points of discussion or questions or motions? Motion to adjourn. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? The ayes have it. We are adjourned. Thank you.